En Kentucky, varios de los que perdieron la vida en las inundaciones son niños. Ello incluye a cuatro hermanos cuyos padres sobrevivieron solo gracias al heroísmo de un vecino del lugar. Con él habló nuestro compañero Charles Peake en un testimonio tan emotivo como desgarrador. Charles, dime lo que pasó una semana en las mañanas de la mañana. Dime tu experiencia. Bueno, well, uh, stepped outside, you know, check out all the devastation that's happened. And I noticed a gentleman in a tree who was hollering for help. There's nobody around. He was, uh, I said, if there's any phone service, I said, all phones were down. I said, uh, I'll try to do what I can to, to help you out. And uh, I found a rope, a pull float, and I picked up a metal rod. So that way, whenever I was walking in the water, I could tap in front of me. It was uh, where, where the gentleman was at. There was a good current to it. He could have got swept away if he would have fell in. So uh, me and another gentleman, he assisted me. And uh, we got to the guardrail. And I made up a knot. I threw it to him. I told him to tie it around him. He said, uh, he, said he couldn't swim. So I said, uh, As soon as you jump in the water, we're going to pull you towards us. So he jumped in, we pulled him towards us, put him on the float, took him back to safety. And I said, is there anybody else? He said, uh, my wife's down there somewhere. I said, okay, we're going to go back and get her. And she was further out in the water. When I got to her, she was at the bottom of the tree. She was in the water hanging on. And uh, she just, she looked so exhausted when I seen her. I said, um, I'm going to throw this rope to you. Try to grab onto it, and then we're going to pull you back. <clears throat> so I threw it to her about four or five times. I just couldn't get to her. The current was too strong. So there were some other people that showed up at the time from Camp Nathaniel. And they had, like, this lifeguard raft, and uh, they tied it onto there. And then um, I threw the rope to her. She had missed it. And, this, and at this time, she had let go of the tree, so she went downstream about 10 yards and was able to grab onto a branch. So at this time, I'm thinking, I got to jump in or she's just going to wash away. So I jumped in the water, swam to a tree, that, a branch that I could get to. I threw the raft to her, and she was able to hang on to it. So I'm pulling the people from Camp Nathaniel. They're in the road. They're pulling, too. So we pulled her to where I was at. <clears throat> and then... Um, She, once she got to me, she said, I don't know how much longer I can hold on to it. I said, I got you. I'm not going to let you go. So so I had her in one hand. And I had my other arm in the raft. And I thought, at this time, I knew once they start pulling, I was going to go under. So I said, guys, on the count of three, start pulling. And they pulled us, and they was able to pull us to the side. And all, the whole time she kept saying, my kids, my kids. And I, didn't, I didn't know what was going on. So we, we, we took her back to where her husband was. And that's when I, that's when I realized they had lost four of their kids. And at that moment, I was just so heartbroken for him because I have a seven-year-old myself. And if anything was to happen to him, I wouldn't know what I was doing. So to think their kids that got washed away, and here they are standing in a tree in the water for hours until somebody showed up. And I'm just, I'm just so heartbroken for them. These people really needed help. It's untold how long they've been out there. And I didn't think twice. I just, I said, I got to jump in. You can either motor fold. And here in Eastern Kentucky, we don't fold. 